All right, thanks for tuning in everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. As always, if you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Anthony Smoke. So today, I'm just getting back from uh, PTO. Um, I was out in uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, shout out to St. Thomas, had a great time. And so now it's time to come back. And, you know, it gave me an idea for this video. I wanted to share a 10-point checklist for starting a new data project, okay? So, first thing that I look for whenever I'm starting a, a new project, whether it be when I was in industry or, you know, in the consulting world, the first thing that you're going to look for is you need to understand the nature of the deliverable that's being asked for. Is that a new report? Is that a new database table? Is that a new database column? Is it a new data visualization? Is it a new calculation? Or is it a change to any of the above that I just mentioned? So that's step one, you have to understand, you know, what is being asked of you. And then you also need to understand what technologies are in play that you have to work with. So sometimes um, I will get on a project and you know I have to use what's on the client's laptop, what's on their environment. Um, no Tableau, okay, I gotta use Power BI. No Power BI, I have to use whatever whatever's there. Um, you know, no SQL Server, maybe we have to use Oracle. Um, just understand the nature of the technology that you're going to have to use to solve that uh, problem. I remember one time in industry, uh, we were talking about uh, a database change and then come to find out it was Microsoft Access, <laughs> you know, nothing wrong with Access, but that just wasn't what I was expecting coming in. So you got to understand the nature of the technology that you're going to be using to solve that data problem. Number two you need to understand what is the desired delivery time frame um, for your deliverable. So sometimes we on the data side or the developer side, we may have a longer time frame than what the project manager or what the client has in mind, right? So we may have three weeks in mind, they may have one week in, in mind. So you have to uh, understand, come to an understanding on what the desired uh, time frame is for the deliverable. If it's going to take you a little bit longer than uh, what you um, initially communicated, then as soon as you know it's going to take you longer, you need to communicate that right away. Number three, you need to understand who is the intended audience uh, for this deliverable. If it's going to be for an executive audience, then you may have to um, roll the numbers up uh, a little higher, take out some of the detail. If it's for an analyst uh, audience, then, or an operational audience, you may want to bake in some more details. You may want to leave in some more details so that they can go through uh, that analysis. And you always have to deal with the dreaded, I need to export this to Excel. So be on, be on the lookout for that. But you need to know and understand who the intended audience is for your uh, report. Okay, so now we're getting into the volume of data and maybe security uh, a little bit. So number four, you need to understand how much historical data are you going to need to uh, deliver this uh, this end result. Sometimes you'll you'll come to a um, you think you're done, and then your PM or your client will say, "Oh, well, I need this for the last uh, four or five years," and you don't have that much data on hand. So you need to know this upfront. That's going to let you work with your back-end person, or if you're the back-end person, uh, you're going to know how much data to pull over to support that solution. So you do need to understand uh, how much historical data is required. Number five, you need to uh, understand the anticipated volume of data that your deliverable is going to generate. So, you know, if your solution is going to generate, you know, 500 million rows, you know, maybe Excel isn't your delivery 
uh, you know, uh, mechanism, right? You may need to um, give someone access to a database. You may need to roll things up. If you're doing a, a visualization, you know, you may have to aggregate up, use, um, you know, bands, if you know what those are. Um, you need to understand how much data uh, you're going to be giving off or how much you're going to be delivering um, to the client or to that project manager or end person. So keep that in mind. Uh, very important here, uh, number six, you need to understand is there any uh, PII or very sensitive data um, that you will need in order to carry out this request. Now PII can include social security number, uh, a passport number, driver's license number, credit card number, very important. So these types of, uh, of data are very sensitive and you may need to get access to this data yourself and you may have to you know, jump through some hoops in order to get that data. And you also meet, need to make sure that it's locked down. Your solution is locked down and not everyone has um, access to it. So you need to understand if PII is involved. Number seven, now we're getting into business processes. You need to understand the business process um, behind the request that you're being asked for. I know as data people, we just wanna do our data piece, right? Tell me what you need, I'll give it to you. But you wanna go that extra mile. You wanna understand a little bit about the, uh, the business process because that's gonna help you create a better solution, right? That's also gonna help you understand uh, what's being asked. A lot of times, um, we're working on something, there's a lot of domain jargon that we may not understand. So I would say, you know, typically for any, any project, there's a uh, team site or SharePoint, you know, wiki, what have you. Try and find those current state process flows or other relevant documentation as necessary. It's gonna help make you more informed and it's gonna help you out in the long run. It's gonna make your solution better as well. And then number eight, uh, I try and find, you know, what are the KPIs associated with the, uh, the business process. Try and get a little understanding of what's being measured. If you're supporting supply chain, try and understand what are supply chain metrics. Um, you know, that, again, that's going to help you uh, with your uh, solution. It's going to give you more insight. It's going to make you seem like a more knowledgeable data person as opposed to someone who is just, um, you know, clicking away and, and working on the technical side. Try and understand the KPIs that can help you with your solution as well. Number nine, try and do some data profiling of the data beforehand. That's gonna help you understand any data quality issues that you're having with the data um, before you start uh, coding and trying to come up with a solution. Data profiling can help pinpoint or highlight um, which data is suffering from data quality issues. It's gonna help you pinpoint those areas as well. It's going to help you find the source of those data quality errors as well. Is it a user input error? Is it uh, a problem with the interface? Um, where the data is being entered? Is your data corrupt? Some data profiling will go a long way. I like to do, from a data profiling standpoint, I like to do uh, distinct value counts. That's gonna help you understand a, what's in your data columns, and it's gonna help you identify if there are any you know, natural keys as well. And that information can be useful. Look for the percent of null, zero, or blank values in your data. That's gonna help you understand how missing or incomplete data is handled in the data set. Also look for minimum, maximum, and average string lengths. That's gonna help you understand how the data behaves as well. Last but not least, number 10, we're talking about business impact. How will your solution impact existing processes. You need to understand that. If you change a calculation or rename a table or a field, uh, how does that impact upstream and downstream processes? Right? You want to keep your inbox clean. <laughs> you don't want people reaching out to you and saying, hey, what happened to my field or what happened to my table? This was renamed. Always understand what you're changing, how that's going to impact others. If you can, find out the names and locations of any reports, uh, databases, data marts, um, 
any fields that are impacted by what you are delivering. Find out um, the names and locations of any reports, uh, databases, or data marts that are impacted based upon your solution. So to wrap up, that was my 10 point checklist uh, when you're starting on a new data project. Um, it served me well and just wanted to share that with you. So do you agree or disagree with anything that I've said? Perhaps you have some items on your own personal checklist that you use when starting a data project. Let me know down in the comment. If you liked what you saw and heard here, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, you can hit that super thanks as well if you wanna support uh, ongoing uh, videos here on this channel. So as always, this has been Anthony Smoke. Uh, take this information, get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching everyone.